it is a small town. It is the largest in the UP. It's built with wildlife, nature, lots of natural resources, and hundreds of hiking trails. But what brings this community together is its people, its workers, and its businesses. One of these incredible businesses is Snowbound Books. Snowbound Books was founded in 1984 by Ray Nerney, and with a collection of 10,000 books, he started Snowbound. He had this dream that he wanted the community to be able to enjoy reading as much as he did. And therefore, Snowbound was born. Today, we are going to discuss our digital marketing plan of how we are going to improve Snowbound digital marketing um, practices, social media accounts, and other aspects of the business to grow their engagement and increase sales. We're going to start by talking about a little bit of the background history of the business. We're going to give a situational analysis and overview of how the business currently runs. We're going to talk about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Then we're going to discuss our digital marketing plan of how we're going to improve Snowbound. And then finally, what mar target markets we are going to go after. So let's begin. First of all, uh, like I said, Snowbound was founded in 1984 by Ray Nanny, and currently it is owned by Dina Wilson. Um, they started the company, like I said, with 10,000 books, and they have a really great relationship with the community already. Most of the locals know where they are. It's located on 3rd Street, um, right by Washington Street downtown. And they have kind of a traditional business model, and they already do have great engagement on social media through Instagram and Facebook. However, our digital marketing plan is really going to expand this and make it that much better and improve their presence online. Okay, so. Moving forward with our situational analysis, uh, just to go over some of the demographics and geographics of this. So first of all, this is appealing to a wide variety of age groups. So we're dealing with people from like 18 to 64. So these are people with varying education levels, incomes, and such. Uh, the main customers are mostly in Marquette as it is a local business. Uh, secondary customers are going to more so reside uh, in neighboring cities and people who are tour touring the area. So psychographically, uh, these people are prideful in Marquette. They uh, enjoy supporting small businesses. And given that uh, Snowbound is has a lot of history here in Marquette with being started in 1984 and starting with over 10,000 books, it's been here for 37 years. It has very deep roots in the community. So basically, they're going to be deeply interconnected and interwebbed with Market itself. So, uh, also psychographically, introverted bookworms are their main type of customer. So these are people who generally enjoy to be alone. They like to lose themselves in a book. And a, a great thing about these bookworms is they're somewhat materialistic and not in a bad way, in a good way. Uh, these people like to have their senses stimulated. So they like to touch the book. They like to feel the book. They like the smell of a new book. So that's a great thing about them. And that kind of brings into their traditional sense of the, of the audience is because these people do enjoy, in fact, uh, having that physical book going into the store and being able to buy the book and hold it and just be able to support a small business while doing all of that in the same. So moving forward to the behavioral segment, which is really tied in with the psych, uh, psychological segment. So there's, like I said, a lot of brand loyalty through the roots since they've been here since 1984. So people are going to be loyal to Snowbound Books. They're gonna to want to come back. And uh, in fact, they may tell their children and bring their children to this bookstore to reintroduce them and keep the generation and income flowing. So you might ask yourself what occasions people might buy books for. And you know that's pretty obvious. They might buy them for personal use, but as far as uh, special events, these can be birthdays, Christmas, whatever you may include in that, and they can buy individual books themselves, or they can buy, uh, they can buy sets of books for uh, whoever loved ones that they have. And I think one of the most important things to pull away from my section of this is the fact that there's at least 12 books read a year uh, by the average person. This is according to uh, Pew Research in 2015, and you might be asking yourself, I don't, I barely read a book actually, I might read only one or two books. And this is actually really, really important because this is actually not telling of us, but telling of their audience. Mm -hmm. If we and all of us only read a little bit of books uh, a year, mm -hmm. think about how much their main audience of introverted bookworms are actually skewing that. So 
generally, you're going to find people buying at least 12 books a year who is their audience. And lastly, for the behavior, this just provides people with an escape, and it ties back with the whole traditionalist and materialist uh, agenda. So these people like to feel, they like to be involved, they like to have that physical uh, escape from the real world. Just like how you might have that with snowboarding or maybe playing video games, whatever it is that you may have yourself. Financially, so we're not able to derive too much information. We weren't able to get information from the employees there. And when we tried to contact management, it was kind of hard to get answers from them. Uh, but we can kind of stitch together uh, their financials based on context clues and make an inference. So one of the things that stands out to us as to why they are in good financial condition is due to author signings and meetings. So authors aren't gonna come to a rundown uh, bookstore because there's not gonna be an audience there. It's gonna be a waste of their time, a waste of their money, and they're just not going to come around. But obviously people see this as a place where they can meet their fans, sign books, and be involved with the community. Uh, another great thing is the new releases are being shown quite frequently, so if you look, uh, if you look on their Instagram posts or their Facebook, you're gonna see that that's quite repeated in their posts. Like we have this book, this book just came out, we just got this one. And that's really great because it shows that they're not just recycling old inventory, it shows that they're bringing in new inventory, they have the money to keep expanding and growing and really give themselves a good name. And lastly, for the financial situation, it's just people walking in and out frequently. When we did our visit and when I did my visits, uh, before I even took this class, and that was, year, that was a year ago probably, people are still walking in and out, in and out of the store up until the doors close. So we can see that they have a lot of foot traffic. So we can kind of infer and stitch together a picture that financially they are doing quite well for themselves. And lastly for my section, I'd like to cover the company competition. So uh, the first thing that I should know is Barnes and Nobles is up there. Uh, because it's one of the first things that shows up on Google when you Google bookstore. It should be noted though, I think most of us when we think of Barnes and Nobles here think of textbooks. So, you know, they're not too big of a competition because the audience isn't thinking Barnes and Nobles uh, hobby books. They're thinking textbooks and of NMU. But I would really like to hit the point on Amazon and, and more so a broad sense e-commerce retailers like eBay and to a sense Walmart. Uh, and one of the Big, big main things that makes them a competitor is the fact that they do ship. So because they ship, uh, that's more of an order qualifier, and, and uh, Snowbound does not do that. And Snowbound can easily say that uh, they can ship just to the market area. They don't have to expand way out, but to hit their main consumer base, they could offer shipping considering it's just in market. And that's something that Amazon, Walmart, and eBay will all do because well, it's in their nature as e-commerce retailers at that point. So with that being said, I'd like to uh, hand it off to Maggie for the SWOT analysis. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, I will be going over the SWOT analysis for books. So first of all, uh, why do we do a SWOT analysis? We want to evaluate what the business is already doing well and build on those strengths. We also want to um, address where improvements can be made in the business. Uh, and we want to maximize opportunities. So there's a lot of things that the bookstore does that involves the community, and we want to maximize that. And just to be aware of some threats, uh, competitors and things like that. So first of all, let's talk about their strengths. <clears throat> As mentioned, they're located right on 3rd Street. This is right in between uh, the Washington Street Shopping District and um, 3rd Street Shopping District. So there's a lot of restaurants and different shops on Washington and 3rd Street. So if someone is out and getting dinner or something, they're probably going to walk right by Snowbound Books if they're shopping or just out with their family. Um, so that's a really good place for foot traffic. Next, they're very active on their social media accounts. We have talked about this a little bit. Uh, they have social media accounts for Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, their Instagram has about 200,000 uh, 200, 2, followers. Um, so we could probably improve on that a little bit, but it's still a pretty good stance. Um, they're very active on it. They post about daily, but, but mostly weekly, about their new releases, uh, any events coming up like clubs and um, author signings. There is also a historical relevance to the store. They've been around since the 1980s, so people are probably very familiar with them in town. Um, another strength is that they're a small business. I know ever since COVID kind of hit, a lot of people have been trying to support small 
businesses where they can just to show their respect and kind of help them out through this hard time. So that can be a strength. And another strength is the immediate access to books and products. So say I wanted this book or something like it, I could probably walk into Snowbound and get it right away, whereas uh, if I needed to use a competitor, I'd probably have to order it online. Um, <clears throat> and another strength is their SEO. I know when I was at my house and I looked at bookstores near me, um, Snowbound was the first to come up. If you live in the dorms, Barnes and Noble might come up first. But again, it's still pretty close and we do have a lot of off-campus students and just local residents that live downtown. Um, so then moving on to the weaknesses. Again, it is a small business. Though this is a strength, it can also be a weakness. I've got those competitors that they're facing like with worldwide companies like Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, so it's kind of hard for them to keep up where they being put in the market. Um, they don't offer delivery, as we mentioned, so you have to go there in person. That might be a ticket for someone. And there's only one location, so if you live in Escanaba, you're probably not going to travel to Marquette just to go to Snowbound, and we only have the one location at Marquette. Um, there's also a limited in-store selection, but I have been in there myself, and when they didn't have the book I wanted, they were able to look it up and offer to order it for me. So, a weakness and a strength. And their website is a little cluttered. Um, so since this is a digital marketing plan, I think we suggest to maybe clean it up, make it a little bit more simple, especially since people can order books online through their website. You wanna make that really user friendly. Moving on to their opportunities. We've talked a little bit about how they have book clubs and community events. We want to utilize these events to um, market to new customers. So maybe I don't go to Snowbound that frequently, but this author's coming to town and they're going to Snowbound, that's gonna bring in new customers. Um, again, utilizing the location for community events, uh, letting people hold different book clubs at the store would bring new customers in. Um, <clears throat> We could also partnership with uh, both local businesses. So we're surrounded by a lot of different businesses. There's a bubble tea shop that just opened up right next door. We could partner with them, say, hey, you offer 10% off if someone comes in with a book from Snowbound and we'll uh, do something for you. Um, and then we also have a lot of social media followers which can help us gain business via word of mouth. Um, you know, if we post something that people like and they reshare it, that's gonna help us get more followers in the future. There's a lot of opportunity there on social media. Lastly, the threats are our competitors. They're larger and they're more convenient. How many of you guys have an Amazon account? How many of you guys have ordered something this month from Amazon? Okay, so we got some brand loyalty. How many of you guys have been to Snowbound Books this month? Okay, a little bit less. So you can see how that is a bit of a threat because none of you guys, well, about three of you were there this month. Um, so they're just larger and more convenient. Lastly, um, Another competitor of ours is the local library. You know, people are gonna go there so they can have, you know, a free book, it's free with the membership. So what we were thinking to make that less of a threat is maybe make events that the library and the bookstore can partner together with so that we can bring awareness to the bookstore and the library at the same time without having to steal each other's customers. Uh, that's about it for this afternoon. Okay, so for our digital marketing strategy, we've got three main goals. Um, the first one being increased brand awareness, the second being attract new customers, and then the last being create a sense of community. For creating a sense of community, like we talked about, they do book clubs, and we think that they need to run with that approach more because that's what gives them their leg up on the competition. Is when you order a book through Barnes & Noble or Amazon, you order it, you get it, you're done. They don't offer you um, a community to participate in. So we want to have them um, utilize that strength more. Um, one idea we have was to have them do reading events, which would be a little different than a book club. Um, you would just be able to come be with people with a similar interest of reading books and do a silent read. We could partner with um, local coffee shops, local restaurants, and do it even um, in the nice weather outside at all the nice um, places that Marquette has to offer. And then for increased brand awareness and attracting customers, we think we can do this primarily through social media. Um, they, like we said, we, they do quite a bit already with their social media. They post consistently, um, but we've noticed that they post a lot of the same type of content. And they also don't utilize hashtags very much. So we want to push them more towards utilizing user-generated content. 
mainly because it's free for them. They don't have to spend the time or the resources creating it. Um, so, an example, we put together three different Instagram posts that mm -hmm. they might be looking for um, to use, mm -hmm. using hashtags, tagging Snowbound, mm -hmm. and the only thing that Snowbound has to do on their end is find it. And if their customers use the proper hashtags and tag them, um, all they have to do is go through and look at those um, posts. So, um, let's say I posted, you know, me getting a new book at Snowbound, um, my followers are gonna see um, me promoting a local store that they might not have known about. I have a lot of people that follow me that aren't from Marquette, don't come to Marquette, but if they do visit, they know about it. So um, this type of content would also increase kind of free marketing in a sense. So also we know that we will need to provide a incentive for customers to do this. Um, yes, when they check out, you can say, oh, post about us on Instagram, but how likely are they gonna do that? So we would suggest they do some type of incentive, whether it be um, a gift card or a coupon, if Snowbound chooses your post. So that would be up to whichever option they wanted to do. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna hand it over to Devin for target. So for target market, we came up with two main audiences. The first one is primary. And the good thing about Marquette County is that it's already a lot of residents, 66,000 approximately. So we can hit most of those people with our book advertisements and ages six or 18 to 64. And the median household income is 53,970, which is good. Mm -hmm. That means they can at least afford, uh, like Dalton said, 12 books. 95% uh, of high school graduate rate, so that's very good. That means most people can read. <laughs> we need that. And 32.9% have a two plus year degree. Mm. So this goes anywhere from associates all the way to a master's. Which if you think about it, Marquette County has 12 cities. So about a third of that is a big chunk of people that need more information. Secondary or tourist to the Marquette area. Um, they are secondary, obviously, because they cannot purchase year-round unless they use our online services, which needs some work. The average party has two to four members, mostly families and middle-aged, so very versatile in what they need to purchase. Retirees spend more time there, so they're more likely to purchase, so we should have some senior discounts. And a radius of three to eight hours away. So this is good for tracking where we need to place our advertisements, and hopefully get a sponsor. For psychographic, our local computer and internet usage is 89.7%, and 80.4% have broadband internet subscriptions, which means they have long-term internet access mm -hmm. to gain control of our online media use. For behavioral, um, we gathered some statistics for our tourism. The overall satisfaction was 4.8 out of 5, which means we really need to amp our online services so that they can keep purchasing if they're not physically there. 92% likely return for an overnight stay. This is very good. So we should think about coupons, some kind of come back after a purchase, get another book free, just so we maintain those margins for the return. All right, so just to recap, like we said, Snowbound is a local bookstore here in Marquette, and they are a very community-oriented businesses, and they have a lot of the strengths that a small business brings. And we are hoping that with this social media advancement plan, it will grow the business not only in engagement, but also in revenue and foot traffic throughout the building. And this will expand not only just to market residents, but also to tourists in the summertime. Thank you for listening today. We have any questions.